Hello, Namaskar and welcome to a celebration supreme, a competition colossal and prizes peerless. This is your host Ajay Punia bringing to you from Doordarshan Kendra, Delhi, the third edge of the seat semi-final of an inter-school quiz celebrating the constitution of India, know your constitution, commemorating the 70th anniversary of its adoption. In the last couple of episodes, we saw some electrifying action by the teams that made it through. Will today's episode be anything like the previous two? Or will we get a smash and grab performance executed perfectly? I have with me four smart teams today and we'll know who joins Modern School and Tagore International in the final in a few minutes from now. Having explored the vast depths of our expansive constitution with over 100 amendments to be here, let me introduce these teams to you. Team Justice is from Silverline Prestige School, Ghaziabad, represented by Ashirwad and Anirudh. Hi everyone, I am Anirudh Singh from Class 11th of Silverline Prestige School. I think uh, it is by far the best constitution that any country has and we should all readily follow uh, whatever uh, qualities we should have as inscribed in the constitution to be a good citizen. Hey everyone, myself Ashwad Yadav, I am from class 11 Silver and Prestige School. I am a theatre artist and the one thing I would like to say about this quiz is we, have, we are sleep deprived from last one week and we just we have been studying countless hours and so on. That's, that's all what I would like to say. Then on table Liberty is the team from DPS Sushant Lok, Triti and Priyanjali. Hi, I am Priyanjali Malik of class 11th from DP Sushant Lok. I believe that this quiz is a very good initiative since the youth should be aware of the constitution which is obviously the lengthiest and one of the most amazing constitutions and the detailed constitutions we have. Hey, I am Triti, I am an 11th reader in DP Sushant Lok and the idealistic part of my mind thinks that if the country of India was a book, it would be the constitution. Then across on my left is Team Equality, represented by Amity International Sector 46, Gurgaon, Avisha and Somesh. Hi everyone, I am Avisha Daman from Class 11th of Amity International School Sector 46, Gurgaon. For me, I feel that the constitution embodies everything that our nationalist movement stood for and that's one of the main reasons why the constitution of the India is the perfect for the kind of nation that India wants to be. Hi guys, my name is Somesh. I am from Amity International School, Sector 46, Gurgaon. I am in 11th grade and I believe that this quiz is a great initiative by the government of India and by Doordarshan because a lot of people, even a lot of learned people do not know much about the constitution of India and through this quiz, it just tries to give everyone an insight into the constitution of India and that is why it is a very nice initiative. And finally, on table fraternity is Indrapuram Public School, Indrapuram, Nimisha and Adhiraj. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Adhiraj Singh, class 11th, Indrapuram Public School, Indrapuram. I believe that such programs are necessary for, the, for, for creating awareness among the youths which can actually improve the implementation of the constitution in the future. Hello, my name is Nimisha Tripathi and I am from Indrapuram Public School, Indrapuram. In my opinion, this initiative by uh, Doordarshan was actually a great initiative because our constitution is the lengthiest one and uh, being an Indian citizen, we all must know about it. Right then, some good looking contenders in today's lineup and I am certainly excited to see how they perform. On some days you win, on other days you learn. Let's find out who wins and who has a lot to learn as we get underway with our first round. It's called Plutopia. You will get five questions, all of them on the buzzer. Three clues to every question. If you hit the buzzer, give me an answer on the first clue. You get 10 points. On the second, it's a seven. On the third, it's a four. And there's a flat minus five for giving me a wrong answer on the buzzer. So there's only one buzzer per clue. So be mindful and strategize if you are ready. First question, first clue on your screen now. As per articles 157 and 158, a blank must be a citizen of India, be at least 35 years of age, not a member of the either house of the parliament or house of the state legislature and not hold any office of profit. It's team equality that has gone for it. Your answer? The president of India. Is incorrect. Team equality, it's not the president. That's a minus five. Clue number two on your screen now. 
Team Justice has gone for it. Your answer is the governor. The governor, absolutely. That's the answer. Good answer there. The G was given eight letters. Very good answer. Team Justice, that gets you seven points. And you mark your presence on the scoreboard. Well done. We move on now to the second question. With the Government of India Act in 1947, it was decided two different countries will be formed. Referendum had to be taken on two regions, whether they'd be a part of India or Pakistan. One of them was Pakhtunkhwa. What present-day Bangladesh region was the other? What present-day Bangladesh region was the other? And you can see a map also of where this is. No one's trying. So we will move on to clue number two for seven points. Six letters. Starts with the letter S. Still no one. Looks like I will move on to third clue. Work it out, work it out. I hope you watch Bangladesh Premier League. It's one of those. But if you don't, then just work it out. Try to solve this anagram. And give me the right answer for four points. Who's trying? Three seconds, else I close it. No one's trying. Three, two, and one. Closing. Uh, everybody missed this. The right answer is Silhet. This is Silhet from uh, Bangladesh. Six letters, Silhet. Nobody got this, no points, none taken away, so that's all right. We move on to question number three. First clue common to all of you. This right was originally a fundamental right, but is now only a constitutional right. It is also the most amended provision. In 1978, it was finally abolished as a fundamental right in the 44th Amendment. Thus, which is the only fundamental right to have been abolished? That's team liberty that has shown interest. Your answer? Right to private property. Is correct. This is indeed the right to property. Absolutely. Good answer on the very first clue. 10 points there to team liberty. Good answer. 10 points. Right to property. Question number four now. Throughout 1920s, the chief concern of Herbert Baker was the design of the Legislative Assembly building with its three chambers. Today, we recognize the Central Legislative Assembly as the Lok Sabha and the Council of States, that is Rajya Sabha. But there also existed a third chamber between 1921 and 1947. What was it called, Team Fraternity? Chamber of Princes. Is correct. Absolutely. Chamber of Princes on the very first clue. Good answer, Team Fraternity gets 10 points. I saw quite a few other teams were interested in this question, but uh, Fraternity was the first to hit the buzzer. And as a result, you get 10 points. Well done. And now for the final question of round one. Part 11 of the Constitution deals with the relations between Union and States. It has two chapters, Legislative Relations and Administrative Relations. Under Administrative Relations, it addresses disputes relating to what? Relations between Union and the States. Two parts, Legislative Relations, Administrative Relations. And under administrative relations, it addresses disputes relating to what? No one wanting 10 for this. Perhaps somebody would be interested in a 7. So moving on to second clue. Five letters. Starts with the letter W. Team equality. Water. Water. Absolutely. The dispute over water. Good answer there, team equality. Well done, that gets you seven points and that brings us to the end of round one. Looks like the teams are strong enough to find the going easy. Not sure though, till how long that will be true. Let's take a look at the scores. Team Justice is on seven points. Team Liberty, you're on ten. Team Equality with a negative and a positive, you're on two. And Team Fraternity, you're in joint lead currently with ten. Right, so those are the scores after the end of one round in a quiz like this. It's time to raise the curtains for the second round of Know Your Constitution. After one round, there's very little to digest and so we're hungry for more. The thriller, that is the third semi-final, will show its true colors now as teams begin to force themselves to fall in course. 
We're ready now for round two. It's called course correction. Eight questions, four pass clockwise, four pass reverse, nothing on the buzzer, no negatives. Ten points for whoever gives me the right answer. First question to Team Justice, fifth question to Team Fraternity between them. And after them, I don't know who gets what question. Depends on who answers the question correctly. If you're ready, Team Justice, first question for you on your screen now. We know that B.R. Ambedkar was given the title of Baba Sahib, but what first from 1952 to 1956, as mentioned in Article 93, was achieved by this person in the picture, fondly known as Dada Sahib? But what first from 1952 to 1956, as mentioned in Article 93? He was the first speaker of Lok Sabha is correct that's the answer he was indeed the first speaker of the lok sabha good answer team justice 10 points on a direct well done we move on to the next question that's for team liberty here's your direct it's a video watch the video question follows instruments of instructions the inclusion of such instructions in such a constitution becomes justifiable for another reason the draft constitution is not a contrivance to install any particular party in power, as has been done in some countries. My question. This is a clipping from the Rajya Sabha TV show Samvidhan, a fictionalized account of formation of the Indian constitution. And uh, who you saw was Sachin Khedekar as B.R. Ambedkar, describing what which we've adopted from the Irish constitution. Directive principle of state policy. Is correct. Absolutely. Well done there. He was indeed describing the directive principles of the state policy. Good answer there, Team Liberty. Direct question, direct answer. That's a tenor for you. Well done. Moving on now, Team Equality. Your direct on your screen. The 99th Amendment to the Indian Constitution was proposed in 2014 to form NJAC. However, the NJAC was struck down in October 2015. Please expand NJAC. National Judicial Appointments Commission. Is correct. That's the answer. It is indeed National Judicial Appointment, Appointments Commission. Direct answers from all the three teams till now. So that means 10 to each one of them, 10 to team equality as well. Let's see if fraternity can seek some inspiration from that and give me a correct answer on the very first go. Here's your question, team fraternity. What transformative process in the functioning of the government is a step-by-step -step process? First reading, reference to a standing committee, second reading, third reading, moving into the other house, and then finally, joint session of both houses. This is the order, a transformative process. So, you will require a... Uh, the yeah, what process. transformative process is this? This passing of the bill. How, a bill, get, how mm -hmm. a bill passes throughout the parliament. And becomes a... Law. Law. Or an act. That or is act. correct. That's the answer that I was looking for. Good answer, Team Fraternity. Took some time, but worked out very well. That's really the entire so transformative okay. process of how a bill becomes an act. So, a good round for all, all of you, all four of you. All of you get 10 points on a direct. Uh, the round will continue, but this time we'll go reverse. And we'll start with Team Fraternity again, and then we move on reverse. Team Fraternity, here's your direct question. This was a cartoon published on 24th January 1950 by Enver Ahmed. The cartoon is called Mother India Gives Birth to Blank of India. Fill in the blank. You can see some caricatured version of some political leaders of that time. Mother India gives birth to blank of India. Constitution. Constitution. Constitution of India, I'm afraid that is incorrect. Passes to team equality. Republic of India. Is correct. That's the answer. This is Mother India gives birth to Republic of India. Well done, team equality. That's a tenor for you. Very good. Nice. So not a constitution, but Republic of India. That's what the cartoon was about. Right. We move on to the next question. This will now be a direct for team Liberty. Here's your direct. Four midnight sessions of the parliament have been, in the, have been conducted since 1947. The first marked India's independence. Two midnight sessions were held to commemorate the Silver Jubilee of India's independence in 1972 and to celebrate 50 years of freedom in 1997. And finally, in 2017, what was introduced during the fourth midnight session? GST. 
Goods and Services Tax Bill. Say that again. Goods and Services Tax Bill. The GST bill. That is correct. That's the answer. This is indeed GST. That was the fourth midnight session. Uh, that happened a historic occasion in the history of India. Good answer, Team Liberty, a 10-pointer, a direct one at that for you. And now to Team Justice, your question is next. In the Constituent Assembly, B.R. Ambedkar supported X as a national language, but with a rider that Y should be the official language at least for 15 years until X became acceptable and was also learned by governing agencies of the states. Please give me both languages. Preferably in order, but I'll still consider if you mess up here, as long as I get both answers correct. He supported one language as a national language, but he said that the other one should be the official language. X is Hindi and Y is English. Hindi and English. Passes, fraternity. Y is Hindi, X is English. Reverse, okay. Passes, equality. X is uh, Hindustani and Y is uh, English. Okay, passes to liberty. X is Sanskrit and Y is Hindi. Okay, uh, Justice, what was your answer? X is Hindi, Y is English. Right, uh, five to Justice, five to liberty. It is Sanskrit and English. Right. The answer is Sanskrit and English. He supported Sanskrit as a national language, but with the rider that English should be the official language. So, the points will be split. Five to justice, five to liberty, and yeah, that's how we will move on to the next question. Both of you scored points. Next one is for team fraternity. This is your question and the last question of this round on your screen. Twelve members are nominated to the Rajya Sabha by the President of India. Amongst the first twelve nominated in 1952, there was an economist too, who later went on to serve as the President of India. From the visual, identify the person who later went on to become President of India. Amongst the first 12 nominated to the Rajya Sabha. Team Fred. No? Passes to Amity. Fakruddin Ali Ahmed. That is incorrect to Team Liberty. No answer. No, oh, pass. Pass to Silverland. Justice M. Hidayatullah. Not M. Hidayatullah. This was Zakir Hossain is who I was looking for. Nobody answered on stage means that nobody gets any points. Means that we'll come to the end of round number two. That's the end of round two as well of this semi-final. Couple of teams continuing their rich scoring win. The numbers on the scoreboard just kept on climbing. Let's see how the scoreboard is stacked after two rounds. Team Justice, you're on 22. Team Liberty, you're currently leading with a slender margin. You're on 35. Team Equality, you right now are on 22. And Team Fraternity, you're on 20. The competition is heating up. The ideals of justice, liberty, equality and fraternity have been firmly enshrined in our preamble as well as on the scoreboard in this quiz. But now, at the doorstep of the final round, the tension will rise, but so will the desire to do better. And those last lingering hopes might yet still be intact. The terrain, however, won't be easy. The final round now, it's called Who Dares Wins. Four multiple choice questions on the buzzer, each followed by a true-false on the bonus. Ten and minus five for the first team on the buzzer. Two more teams to attempt for five minus five. If correct, the follow-up uh, bonus, true-false, will be for five points. But if incorrect, minus five to you and plus five to the others. So attempting it is not mandatory. You can let it go for some other team on the buzzer. And the same scoring pattern will be applied to them as well. Looking forward to a battle for tooth and nail. There is no time to rest. We begin with question one on your screen now. Which of these states does not have a bicameral legislature? Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Telangana or is it Madhya Pradesh? It's team justice that has gone for it. Your answer? Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh. You think Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Telangana all have bicameral legislature? Yes. Uh, and this has a unicameral one? That is correct. That's the answer. Alongside Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Telangana and Uttar Pradesh. That's what I was looking for. Good answer. The states that I mentioned have bicameral legislature. Team Justice gets it right on the first attempt, so that means you get a 10. 
And what's more, you also get a bonus. You can decide to not answer, but it'll be great for you if you answer and get it correct. Right, here's your bonus, Team Justice, other teams on the buzzer. Listen to the audio, question follows. I am made of a one-time programmable chip that cannot be accessed or connected to any external device or network. Thus, I cannot be corrupted or be modified in any way possible. I am allotted to the polling booths through an elaborate randomization process. Right, you heard the audio. The statement is, released by the Election Commission of India, this is the description of VVPAT. True or false or you don't want to answer? We don't want to answer. You don't want to answer. Right, any of the teams interested? On the buzzer, plus five if you're right, minus five to you, plus five to the others if you're wrong. True or false? Released by the Election Commission of India, is this the description of VVPAT? Okay, three seconds, else I close it. Three, two, one, closing. Right, so nobody wanted to hazard a guess on this one. Perhaps you will run out of opportunities if you don't keep trying, but I will give out the answer. The answer was false because this was a description of the EVM, not the VVPAT. The close cousin of uh, VVPAT, in fact, the senior partner. Okay, so this was EVM and not uh, VVPAT. Uh, good on you, Justice, that you didn't attempt and didn't mess it up. So you stay with your 10, that's what you score. And we move on to our next question, common to all of you on the buzzer, here it comes. Consequent to acquisition from their uh, colonial powers, which of these states or union territories was incorporated into the Union of India the earliest? Was it A, Dadra Nagar Haveli? Was it Goa? Was it Pondicherry? Or was it D, Daman and Diu? This is Team Justice again. Dadra and Nagar Haveli. Is correct. Absolutely. This is indeed Dadra and Nagar Haveli. Very well done. The earliest of the four options given 10 points. Team Justice was also the earliest of the four teams trying to attempt this question. Good answer there. Yet again, you will be given a follow-up bonus. You can decide whether you want to answer or not. 10 points already to you. Here's your question. Many rulers of princely states didn't agree to join the dominion of India initially and Hyderabad even tried to lease or buy Goa for its access to the sea. We don't want to answer. Does anybody want to take this up? You don't have a lot of opportunities. There's just two more questions after this. Right, team equality wants to hazard a guess. True or false? That was wrong. It's not false. This is true. So that is incorrect. That's a minus five to team equality, plus five to the other three teams. Two more questions remain. Enough opportunity for team equality to bounce back. We move on to number three. In October 1947, the then Maharaja of Kashmir, Hari Singh, signed an instrument of accession that specified three subjects on which Jammu and Kashmir would transfer its power to the government of India. Which one of these was not one of the three subjects? Is it A, foreign affairs? Is it B, defense? Is it C, communications? Or is it D, fundamental rights? Fundamental Team equality? Rights. Fundamental rights. Is correct. That's the answer. Plus 10. It is indeed fundamental rights on the very first go. With a very desperate 10-pointer for you there because you lost out on the last one. Now you can add five more to that if you identify the statement that's coming on your screen now. The Constitution of India is adorned with artwork by some of India's finest artists. The second page of the Indian Constitution, that is part one, which defines union and its territories, features the Zebu Bull that you see in the visual from Nalanda University. Team Fraternity has shown interest, but they will wait. Team Equality, what would you like to do? True. You will answer and you will say true. This is the Zebu Bull from Nalanda University. Team Fraternity, what would your answer have been? False. That it's false, but not because Nalanda, but because this is from Mohinjo Daro. So that means Team Equality, that's a minus five to you and plus five to everybody else. I will give you a plus five anyway, right? <laughs> Alongside the two other teams, Teams Justice and Liberty. So minus five Team Equality, that wasn't true. This is the Zebu Bowl from Mohinjo Daro. Final question on your screen, here it comes. Which of these is the newest right given by the Indian government under the fundamental rights? Is it A, right against exploitation? Is it B, right to education? Is it C, right to privacy? Or is it D, right to freedom of religion? Yes, team equality. Right to education. Right to education, that is incorrect. That's a minus five. Right to privacy. Please, please. Right, team liberty. It's right to privacy. 
it is indeed right to privacy that's the answer that i was looking for that's a plus 5 well done not right to education minus 5 there to team equality but a plus 5 there to team liberty and what's more you also get a follow up statement the highest number of seats in the rajya sabha are from uttar pradesh while the second highest are from tamil nadu please hold on team equality the highest number of seats in the rajya sabha from uttar pradesh second highest from tamil nadu and next tamil nadu you can let it go if you're not too sure or you can <coughs> perhaps risk it in the interest of a reward that may follow um true you are answering and you think this is true that is incorrect that's a minus 5 team liberty i think that has changed the look of the scoreboard but we'll know that in a bit let me just close this question uh that was false because second highest is not tamil nadu tamil nadu is the third highest with 18 second highest is maharashtra with 19 and uttar pradesh tops the charts with 31 well uh, the game was as cruel as it was kind as we just saw the flowers of kindness showered on whom the final okay. scores will now tell us team justice finishes with a score of 57 team liberty falls behind and you finish with a score of 45 uh, team equality didn't have a great round and as a result means that you finish with a score of 22 and team fraternity you finish with a score of 35 smooth sweet and splendid the three words perfectly define the performance of our victors today our winners from the third semi final is team justice from silver line prestige school absolutely brilliant very well done congratulations for qualifying into the final and of course mighty impressive each one of you a performance worth cherishing and to each one of you watching these teams deliver a memorable performance thank you from the bottom of my heart for tuning in I'll be back in the next episode but with a new set of four teams after which we complete our lineup for the final should be spectacular or so we hope and wish see you then bye bye